Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's time for some more packing stories this week. So, this thing, it's probably not too hard to tell what's in it having a slash hat on it, but there is kind of a fun story behind this. You know, outside of just what the Brazilian dream is, but let's see it one more time before I continue the story. There it is, the Brazilian dream. So last episode, we got the pickup ring to replace that, and we talked again about the Brazilian dream. I think I've documented that interesting tale enough, but I seriously think this was probably the cheapest these things will ever be ever again. And I kind of slightly regret selling this one because of that reason, but at the end of the day, I don't think I'll ever have a every single Slash model collection, but who knows? Maybe I will. It just depends if that museum gets up and running or if I just decide to do something a little bit smaller than a full-on museum. But only time will tell on that. But no, the fun story behind this is I got the notification on my phone and it said, your video 2018 and then the rest got cut off, sold, and my heart immediately sank. I was like, no, no, not that one. Please don't be that one. Because I was thinking it was this other thing in this tan lift and reissue style case. And having that sinking heart feeling about this guitar, I think you guys will be happy to know I'm going to pull this one off the market. The Abalone Sparkle lavender. I mean, I had it for kind of a very, very premium price because this one's not perfect. It has the replaced nut. I had to revamp the electronics back to original, so it's not like perfect collector condition, but these things are getting so hard to find. And that sinking heart feeling was like, yeah, that's my sign to pull this one off the market because it's going to be too hard to find another one in short term to replace it. So this one's going to the vault. I'll eventually find the other colors for my own collection, but that's not to say I'm not sad to see this thing go, but nowhere near as heartbroken as I would have been to have lost that one. But this one's going to a good home. He says he's not necessarily a Slash fan, but he's going to have a blast doing some Led Zeppelin on it. But he's got a collection of about 30 guitars or so, so he's excited to have this one. So let's go ahead and get this beautiful plain top Brazilian dream onto its new home. What a saga these things have had the past couple of months. Moving on here, what is our next tale? This thing, I am so surprised it took so long to sell, but it didn't help that I didn't actually have it on reverb. This is my very last SG of this very interesting signature series that Gibson did the past year or so. And trust me, we've talked about this one a lot, the Captain Kirk Douglas SGs. Now, now that they're out of production, or at least getting there, sometimes you still occasionally find them, but I have not seen any brand new ones show up on Reverb in a long time. So if you do find another one still, definitely snap it up. But these things, I think they're going to just continue to keep going up in value because they're just gorgeous. I mean, sure, it's got the Rosewood fretboard, but once you come to terms with that, it's just an SG Custom at Gibson USA prices, and you get the cool Vibrola that reads Captain. I definitely still need to review the first version of these, but the green and blacks were just gorgeous the second time around, especially with their unique volume knob. Man, it's been a while since I've reviewed this guitar. But no, this one sat on my troglysguitarshow.com website forever, and it was a good price too. So <laughs> somebody finally snapped that thing up. So no real fascinating tale with this one besides saying goodbye to my last one of these. But to break up our boxing stories, let's go ahead and unbox something that I won on eBay. I don't hunt eBay as hard as I used to in the past. However, I just happened to click the recent ending auctions and these pickups came up. So I was bidding to win. I got the first one. And then the second one's like, oh man, I'm gonna have to bid even more to make sure that I don't accidentally just get one because it was Gibson dependable. He parts guitars out and you have to win both auctions or else, yeah, you only have half the set of pickup and it's not as valuable. So it can kind of be a little bit risky doing this. So what pickups did I win here? None other than an original set of Gibson Dirty Fingers pickups. But you're going to notice two adjustment springs on this side and only one over there. What's all that about? We've got our double row of adjustable pull pieces. That's how we know they're Dirty Fingers, despite having the Tim Shaw date stamps. That's just the style they used back then, but these date to 1981. But you can see these utilize two springs over here, which makes them different from a regular one. These came out of the highest end Gibson Sonics. That's why people like those. They also like to part them out because these are very, very, very valuable pickups. That's why you got the big Mac Daddy Sonics Custom, because it didn't get the velvet brake pickups, it got the high-end Dirty Fingers. Also had a coil split switch. 
So anyways, I thought we would take a look at these things because besides just the double springs right here, you can put these in anything. You can actually see they just use a conversion bar right there. So you can just take that off of the base plate and use it in a normal ring. But what makes these ultra special is the fact that they have double leads on them. So that means we can actually coil split these pickups, which not all vintage dirty fingers have, but this would be very beneficial for restoring some like ES-335 instruments that utilizes the coil splitting abilities. So to make sure a pickup works without actually installing it in a guitar, is just take your multimeter to it and make sure everything reads the way it should be. Now the tricky part is one of the wires is the coil split, so it should read half as much, whereas the other one will be the hot one. Generally, you just see four conductor wiring done today rather than two separate leads. But this lead gives us 8.11, so that tells us it's the coil split lead right here, the one that has the rubber tubing on it. So it looks like this thing has some sort of an extension on it. It seems to be working properly at 16k ohms. Moving on to the other, looks like I found the split lead at eight, which is correct. However, this one's a bit trickier. You have to ground it off all the way down here and then you don't have a lead until all the way down here. And then this lead's pretty short, but it reads the way it should. So if you need a side of these, you can check these out in my reverb shop or contact me directly for a better price. This one should be fun because we've got a lot to add to the story. So in case you missed it, it's the Hybrid 2 Stratocaster. We had reviewed and demoed this one not too long ago through my international forwarding service. And it was a gift from a father to his daughter. I actually ended up really liking this Stratocaster. I'm glad that they did it, but I'm still sad that we don't have the Sakura Burst to document. I did actually find some, but they're in Australia, and Australia is prohibitively expensive to get stuff from. For some reason, yeah, they're on Fender Australia's website, but unfortunately, I've got no way to get it. I mean, I've got contacts in Australia if I really needed them, but it would just be way more expensive to get out than it even is for Japan, but that's just the way things go unfortunately. And on top of that, I only found those in Australia when I was researching this video and I was like, what? No, because I thought they had came back in stock in Japan, but no, it didn't. But they're both fans of the show. They asked me to sign the back of the headstock, which I'll gladly do. I think it devalues your instrument more so than increases this value. But hey, some people ask me to do it, so I'll do it on occasion. But the other fun story about this one is Japan exclusive came to the USA and then was getting forwarded to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's been all around the world. Now that we've got that done, I always like to block off the trims when I demo strats, so I need to reverse that. And if you're wondering how I do that, I just put one of these Stumac fret erasers in the back, and that's just about the exact width that you need. But surprisingly, when I took it out, it actually wasn't doing anything like when I first put it in, so I think wh whatever I did here definitely fixed that bridge to make it way more playable, because it was about as unstable as a Floyd Rose tuning that thing back up. But I think I've got it back dialed in now. And the last thing that we have to do with this one is they didn't want the gig bag. They wanted to upgrade to a bad boy hard shell case. Let's go ahead and fix that. And it's one of those nice molded plastic with the TSA latches. These are my favorite fender cases. They're so satisfying to open and they're pretty darn protective. And it looks like I should be able to stuff that gig bag in the case compartment there so they can get both. But what a fun journey for this one. Let's go ahead and get it packed up and finally sent off to Canada after quite a wait. Next up, we've got another Fender to talk about. It is the Photo Flame Telecaster. So this video absolutely flopped at first and it's because I didn't have the right title thumbnail combination. So I swapped it and then, hey, it was a number one hit. <laughs> Such a cool guitar here. I'm definitely glad I did the review and documentation of it because, you know, now I know what to expect with these. Like I had a good idea and a lot of viewers were like, you know, I would probably just prefer a veneer. But I think the true beauty behind these comes down to the neck profile and the way these things feel to play. I'm not going to say these pickups are fantastic most of them that you see on the used market have been long replaced. So there's definitely a reason behind all that, but I thought the neck pickup didn't sound half bad on the Dirty Channel. But this thing ended up selling on Reverb within about a day, but he has to make sure his wife isn't home when he gets this, I guess, because she doesn't want him to buy any more guitars. He's got too many, so a spa day is in her future. Let's get it packed up and sent on its journey. This guitar had a bidding war over it. 
It took me a long time to track this thing down, but only a mere hours to sell it. This is the exclusive SG24 fret with the mini humbucker and the pole pieceless bridge pickup. It's such a cool guitar. I really enjoyed it. Love documenting it and experiencing the split tones out of this pickup set and learning that, hey, there's another holy grail of this, the first run that I do need to find that has the Tony Iommi pickup. So maybe when I find that, I'll add that to my personal collection. I'm sure I'll regret selling this one one day if I ever want to get it back, but I, I view this as more so like a player's collectible model rather than like collector, collector grade, because you could easily put these exact same pickups in any other Gibson SG as long as it had 24 frets and get about the same. And I don't really care about the extra frets personally. But it was between three people on this guy and eventually somebody pulled the trigger. But he needed me to hold it because he accidentally had his incorrect address on his PayPal account because he's actually going on vacation. He wanted me to send it to his buddy, which would be fine normally, right? But unfortunately, PayPal forces you to ship to the confirmed address on their account. And if you don't, that's how people can scam you. Not saying that this guy's trying to scam me. He was just trying to send it to his friend so I didn't have to hold it for a couple of weeks. But great PayPal, you know, a couple of years ago, they stopped refunding fees when you refund somebody and on a transaction like this that's like 50 bucks you can't just give that away to paypal so i have to hold on to this for a couple of weeks but i'm going to go ahead and pack it up ship it mark the box that way it's ready to go And our last one that we're saying goodbye to is actually going to somebody who has purchased a whole boatload of guitars from me, but we'll talk about that later. This is the Telecaster Les Paul Custom. So this was one of those mod collection guitars that I took a chance on because this video performed very well, like I thought it would, but I had a feeling that, you know, maybe finding the end buyer for it wouldn't be as desirable because, you know, it, it's it's a strange guitar, and that's why it's going to the collection that it's going to. I mean, it's the same guy who has my old Steve Howe, the Les Paul. He's got the Super Standard. He's got the Kazuyoshi Saito Aging Prototype, among a whole bunch of other guitars. I'm just waiting for the day that he emails me that he's done with guitars and he wants me to buy them back because those are some sweet pieces he's got. So this fits in perfectly with his collection. I know he had just recently bought one of those Tuxedo Les Paul Customs. That was one of the 20th anniversary ones. So he's just got such a cool collection. So that's exactly where this type of guitar belongs. And, you know, it's fun. It's going to be something completely different. I really like the gold design on this one. I really regret not getting one of those Hummingbird 335s because that gives me kind of similar vibes to this one. But all that means we need to pack this one extra securely because it has to be shipped overseas. Let's do it. All right, Droglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.